across Texas. The issue is. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Rudy Koski in Austin. And I'm Greg Grugan in Houston, and this is Texas The Issue Is. There is a bipartisan effort in the House and Senate aimed at making the penalty tougher for criminals who cut their ankle monitors. Months ago in Dallas, two hospital workers were killed by a suspect who was in the hospital to witness the birth of his child. Months earlier, he was arrested for cutting his ankle monitor. I spoke to Dallas State Representative Rafael Anchia. It's tragic that we had to learn about uh, the fact that if you cut off your ankle monitor, your parole is not revoked because two healthcare workers at, at Methodist Hospital were murdered in, in the heart of, of the community that I represent. Did it shock you to find out that this wasn't just an isolated incident about an offender who had an ankle monitor and cutting it off and then committing a crime? The Board of Pardons and Paroles had failed to revoke the, uh, the parole for uh, a violent criminal who had been arrested on a number of different occasions who had uh, violated his parole, who had um, uh, tested positive for drugs while on parole. And when all of that came out, I just thought to myself, you know, what were the, the last best chances that we would have had uh, to stop this uh, violent murderer from killing these healthcare workers? What do you mean if you cut off your ankle monitor, you don't immediately go back to jail, right? Like that, that one doesn't even, you know, pass the, the, the basic test of, of, um, of common sense. There are some divisive issues this legislative session. Do you think this is one, your series of bills, could be one of those times where we see bipartisanship? What have you heard from your colleagues on the other side of the aisle in reference to this? On, on the ankle monitor bill, we already have a, a Senate sponsor, Senator Huffman from Houston, uh, who's a Republican. She has uh, she's working on that bill in the Senate. Um, and so we, we anticipate we're going to have some broad bipartisan and bicameral support. I have uh, Republican joint authors that are ready to go on the ankle monitor bill. The other bills are also common sense. Uh, other members are coming up to me on the House floor saying, hey, I want to get on that on those bills. I can't believe those things are not already law and uh, let's work together. So. I'm hopeful in, in, in an environment that, that sometimes can be divisive, that we can have broad bipartisan support for these common sense reforms. Why now? Do you think that, unfortunately, you know, the Methodist issue happened, but that you can use this tragedy and turn it into something positive? You know, people have been fired from the Board of Pardons and Paroles. There's been an in internal uh, investigation by that organization, the state auditors looking at it, it's entirely possible that after all of these investigations take place, uh, we need a major overhaul of the Board of Pardons and Paroles because um, in, a, in at least these two cases, the, the, the ankle monitor uh, violations did not cause them to revoke parole, which is really what should have happened. Who's at fault? Where, what levels of failure was this on? Was it just on partisan parole or, or lawmakers at fault as well? So uh, we think a top to bottom of, of pardons and paroles and, and uh, sort of holding the, the executive branch to account. That's our job as a co-equal branch of government. And at the same time, we're going to look at TDCJ. You know, have the monies that have been diverted from TC, TDCJ by the governor cause there to be not enough supervision there, not, not enough guards in an environment where it's hard enough to, uh, to hire guards in the first place. Uh, so that they're having to let people out, uh, violent uh, criminals out on these ankle monitors when instead they should be in jail. So there's a top to bottom on this as well. You know, the fact that none of my colleagues nor I knew that uh, this was not uh, the law already is also a problem or we're going to try to remedy that this session. That interview seemed like there is an appetite to have teamwork. Rudy Koski, what's your one word? Molasses. Okay, Greg Grugan. I'm taking a page out of the Koski playbook with a hyphenated word, no brainer. Thank you for your hyphen. The Fox Texas Trio will have a lot more to discuss after this break. The Fox Texas Trio is back to discuss this 
rare, in my opinion, bipartisan effort to do something when it comes to uh, criminal justice, to the criminal justice system. Rudy, the penalty, if this bill passes, would make the offender who cut their ankle monitor to serve out the rest of their term in jail and make this a state jail felony. Is this too tough of a penalty to get everyone on board? You know, Stephen, I agree with Representative Anchia. There's, this seems to be like a no-brainer. What, did Greg say that? Yeah, no-brainer. But as history has proven great. time and time again, <laughs> common sense, you know, common sense is not very common. Government can be stuck in a uh, bureaucratic status quo that prevents or slows down positive change, which is why my word was molasses and not no-brainer. Now, reform certainly can be sticky mess uh, to do, especially now during a time when progressive activists want to disband local police. And there are district attorneys and judges giving career criminals free passes out of jail only to reoffend. But this change, this bill, I think it will not get stuck in molasses, get stuck in committee. Stephen? Greg, a Democrat from Dallas, a Republican from Houston, and Senator Joan Huffman, basically having companion bills. Is this that one of those olive branches that both Democrats and Republicans may be able to hang their hat on at the end of this session? Stephen, I watched the hearing on Huffman's bill before the Senate Criminal Justice Committee, and I thought Republicans and Democrats were gonna bust out with a chorus of kumbaya. Now, needless to say, <laughs> it was moved to the full Senate on a unanimous vote, so to answer your question, yes, there is major consensus on this measure and a shared astonishment that stricter consequences weren't already in place. I mean, this is tough to oppose even for reform-minded anti-incarceration Democrats. My guess is you could take it to both chambers tomorrow and get supermajority support. Rudy, there was some finger pointing at the Board of Pardon and Paroles, basically pointing finger at Governor Abbott. There were some failures in this, and there are other examples of this. So is Antia right at pointing fingers at pardon and parole? Well, there goes your kumbaya moment, Greg. Well, sure, the governor uh, is the boss, and Republicans have been in the uh, top offices for more than 20 years. But Democrats like Antia, you know, they've been under the Capitol Dome for a very, very long time, too. And he says uh, they were clueless about this, too, right? Well, remember the old saying, when you point a finger at someone, Three more pointing back at you, mm -hmm. right? Now on the positive side, this bill is a bipartisan proposal. I agree with Greg. It's an example of how even arch political rivals can agree on something, but I don't think it's a sign of smooth sailing in the weeks to come. No, 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 Stephen. Greg, when we cover this here in Dallas, the two hospital workers being killed at Methodist in Dallas, the hospital itself did not even know that they had someone who was approved to be in the hospital to witness the birth of their child. That seems like a big just drop drop in communication that the hospital was not notified. But do you think this could start a series of reforms or do you think it's kind of a let's just be happy with getting the ankle monitor thing passed and then we'll talk about something else later? Look, ankle monitors are a means of keeping defendants awaiting trial out of our overcrowded jails so they don't lose their jobs, their cars, and their housing. For that to happen, we as a society have to have confidence that they actually work, and part of that function is disclosure to those potentially at risk and severe consequences for those who disable or discard the tracking devices. The disclosure part is the toughest challenge because it requires trained people tasked with notification, and that is expensive, probably less costly than keeping defendants in jail. Now, interesting number, more than 1,100 Texas defendants cut off their ankle monitors last year, some of whom went on to commit violent crimes, and multiple states already charge defendants with a felony if they disable a court-ordered tracking device. Also intriguing, not a single progressive group or reform activist testified against Huffman's bill, which I think speaks volumes. Well, there could be a lot of bipartisan, at least with this topic, so we'll have to wait and see how far it goes. To see this interview and any of our other segments, go to our station's YouTube channels. And keep the conversation going by messaging us on social media. And be sure and join us next week when we talk with Senator Ted Cruz about the growing national debt and the deeply troubled Texas border. In the meantime, let us know what you think the issue is.